Hi everyone, welcome back to Beerich Podcast. So, while reading today's Mint newspaper, I came across an article which was interesting to me. So, I thought uh, it will be a learning for you. So, the headlines is, uh, Invites and Reads, See Record Fundraise. Okay, this is because SEBI has come out last month and they have bought new regulations to REX, mm. R-E-I-T-S. Mm. What is R-E-I-T-S? Real Estate Investment Trust. Yes. What is it? What is the Real Estate Investment Trust? So it gathers funds. Yes, investors uh, pool in money together mm. and they buy a real estate mm. and commercial real estate and that is rented out and the rental yield is split amongst the people who invest money. Before, there were a set criteria in the sense that you need to have so much money to invest into it. Mm. So it prevented a lot of people from entering it. Mm. So this new mm. red regulation by SEBI has opened up the doors for very much smaller investors. Mm. By allowing much smaller investors, more liquidity enters the market. Okay. So it's easier for, to people to exit and enter these things. Right? So your fractional investment ticket size has been brought down from minimum of 25 lakhs to 10 lakhs. Mm. So retail investors and high net worth investors is easier to enter. Invest in high-grade commercial real estate. Mm. Before it was very difficult. Now it's not anymore. Before the previous challenges were that if you want to enter a high quality thing, you and your friend have to get together, pull in funds and then buy stake in commercial properties without any standard valuation. There's no due diligence done. Mm. And it was an investment risk, very high investment. It's not okay. regulated. Okay. Now with this, small medium rents are being lowered to 10 lakhs, making a broader base of investors can enter. Mm. More people will enter it. And they've also made it more democratic mm. in the sense that we must at least have 200 unrelated investors, meaning mm. you and me, if we are brother, sister, we are counted as one. Okay. So unrelated investors, okay, and no single investor can own more than 25% of a scheme. Mm. So you cannot get priced out in the sense that if some guy owns 25% or more, he is pretty much, uh, you are all his slave. Mm. So to prevent that, no guy can own more than 25% of a scheme. So make sure it's democratic structure. Mm. Then also they have said, the asset value, whatever is purchased, must be of 25 to 500 crores. Mm. That means only good quality assets can be bought. You cannot buy some Chatri asset and say, okay, mm. take an investor's money everywhere, okay. buy some uncle's property somewhere, mm. uh, which is not giving any yield and it's not going to grow and mm. if investors are stuck. You cannot do anything like that. Mm. These all have to be quality assets. And unlike traditional REITs where investment was pooled, SM REITs where investors can also specifically select the assets to invest in. Mm. So, offering you more personalized investment options. Okay. And how do you show pricing transparency? The best way to show pricing transparency in investment is to list it. Mm. So, if it's listed in the stock market, you will know immediately yeah. what is the actual value. You get fair pricing, more liquid, better entry and exit options for investors. You want mm. to exit something, it's very easy to exit. It's listed. So, this is one of the ways property can get listed into. Mm. You can get an idea of how property market is doing. Is you look at all these rates once they're all listed, especially small, medium rates are listed. By looking at the analysis of the cost of these rates and how they've been performing and all that, over a period of time, you can get an idea of real estate itself. Okay. How the real estate mm. market is doing. And most importantly, you will get regulatory oversight. Mm. So, this new regulations has also said you have to have a fund manager. It has to have a minimum net worth and experience in fund management. This is all just to prevent fraudulent practices which mm. have been there before and protect investments. And most importantly, 95% of the investors' funds raised must be completely invested in rent yielding assets. Mm. So to, this will ensure stability and reduce speculative risk. Mm. That means 95% of the money raised in your fund has to be used to completely be invested in rent yielding assets. So all this is good. So, because of this main reason why the fund flow is opened up is they've reduced the bar for entry. Okay. From 25 lakhs, they've dropped it to 10 lakhs, mm. which is a huge drop. Mm. Right. So, a lot of people now have an option to enter. And uh, this is one way maybe the real estate sector can get a boost. So, it is like stock split. Uh, the higher price the stock will now be traded at exactly. lower price. Yes. So, many investors will buy. Yeah. It's literally doing it that for mm. rents. And... Uh, Real estate industry has been in doldrums, especially commercial real estate has been in the doldrums. Mm. So, this option allows people who are looking to invest into commercial real estate but find it too expensive, too mm. priced out, gives them an opportunity to enter that space mm. with a little money.
So how does it differ from buying a property and investing in real estate? Yes, because investors. let's say you want to buy a property in Mount Road, mm. right? That property will be worth five hundred crores. Like prestigious bought a tract of land in Bangalore for four hundred fifty crores. Mm. You're talking all properties in crores. Mm. You and me do not have crores. Mm. How do we enter? Get into that? Have fun in that game. Uh-huh. This way you can enter. Of course, there's a lot of speculation. Mm. They're trying to remove the speculation and they're trying to say this is more transparent. Mm. But there is risk also involved in this. Just because you buy a commercial property doesn't mean it's going to rent out. Mm. Okay. Correct. You understand? These also have cyclical nature business. You have to do analysis and study and everything and then invest. Just because SEBI has come out lowering the bar and made it more transparent and everything doesn't mean immediately there's no risk in it. Mm. There is still risk in it. That risk you have to understand. What they've done is they've removed some of the risk. Mm. Some of the uncertainties have been removed. But there's still a lot of risk in real estate. Okay. This doesn't mean real estate asset as in class, you know, all the problems are yeah. fixed and now it's going to go mm. booming and all that. It's not that. You have still have to be cautious. And the people who are running all these funds which you're seeing running are from people who are high net worth individuals. Mm. Let's say I have already have 10, 15 crores, right? Okay. For me, I need to diversify. Mm. So I can play small bets. Put 10, 10 lakhs mm. in different kind of small rates. And if it suddenly one of them kicks, you know, it's like doing IT. It'll be a multi bagger. Yeah, it's a yeah. multi bagger. Yeah. You know, I lose 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs in something, mm. but I'll make 2 crores and 3 crores mm. in something else. I can take that risk because mm. I have so much of funds. Mm. But someone who has only 10 lakhs, mm. you definitely cannot be entering this and okay. saying, I'll do enter this space. Should not. So, who controls this? Is it a government or a private party? No, no, no. It's like a mutual fund. Mm. Okay. Let's say there's a committee for this and there's a company for this and they'll sit and do all this. Yeah. Which has oversight. Mm. Through SEBI, there'll be oversight. It's not like what like a provident fund or anything. Uh-huh. It's not guaranteed run by the government. It's all done privately. So you and your friends can get together and even create edits. Mm. And, uh, you know, list it and follow all the regulations and put all, loan, all the paperwork and you can start one. So will it impact the price of the PG Invit in the near term? No. PG Invit is completely run on government. Mm. That is a completely different way that okay. works. What does PG Invit stand for? Power Grid Investment Trust. Mm. What do they do? Uh, they invest in the power sources. They invest on hard assets for the power sector. Mm. That is transmission and all that. And they in turn lease it out to the government. So their model is very different. It's got nothing to do with this. So I thought the invits and the page invits. In yeah, this is what? This mm. is being a uh, newbie investor. Okay. Where you just see invit and PG uh, invit right. and think all of it. It's <laughs> like saying dot com. Mm. You know, I also create one. Instead of uh, Amazon, I create Amazon. Mm-hmm. Uh, put Amazon.com. <laughs> then the sounds is the same. Okay, mm-hmm. you, you cannot be falling for it. That's why analysis is important. Mm-hmm. PG Invit. The reason why we were looking at it was, was a completely different reason. Mm-hmm. And there's a separate video I've done on that. Yeah. And I've written, spoken I'll about it. it many, in yes, I've spoken about it many times. Written articles mm-hmm. about it. So the reasoning behind that is very different. And I understand if you've entered PG Invit in a high point, now it's come down. Mm-hmm. PG Invit is completely reliant on interest rate cycles. So as soon as interest rate starts changing, PG Invit's numbers will start changing. Okay. And its numbers will also move. If you have entered in a high price, either you can move out and realize you have a sunk cost fallacy and move out and mm. lick your wounds and invest into something else. Otherwise, if you have nowhere else to put your money and you don't care about that money right now, you leave it there and see what happens. But that is a different story altogether compared to this what this article okay. said. I hope you enjoyed this video and had some learning about uh, invits and what were the changes that were made by SEBI. So if you like this video, share it with your friends and uh, if you want to see more kind of videos, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you.